Dun, 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 dun. Okay, I got my uh, apron that my wife made me. Sloan chef. I'm a chef. Uh, let's see. Uh, purple. You know, I was in the sus hut. I guess uh, sus hut's like a think tank that I have for the uh, darn flies. I'm about to pull my Sydney Green Street again. Sorry. Anyway, I found my. It's a lot of stuff that I have, you know, just jump around, move around somewhere. I used to move around somewhere. I found my little, little pouch here. I found my some buttons that I had. Like this is a. Actually, this is when um, Boomer Johnson came to the uh, came to East London, and uh, and uh, I was hanging out with those those cats. People that brought them, unapologetically African. Yeah. Oh. Occupy Wall Street. Yeah, I, you know, I did a occupy. A, they had this thing where you could do any. Now you you can, you know, have an idea and then execute it. So my idea was since my um, my grandmother's grandfather, him and his brother used to walk from the battery in Manhattan. They used to walk from the battery all the way up to Harlem. You know, so because of, they did that. I, was going, I said, well, let me do my Occupy Wall Street. So what I did, I started from 155th Street, you know, to call Sugar Hill. Um, and I walked down the, you know, the, the, the west side there, the river, no, river side, all the way down with a sign. I forgot what the sign said. It's got a picture someplace. And this is my favorite uh, Occupy Wall Street button. We are the 99% join us, economic justice. This is a good one. This is a good sentiment. So I got that one. Oh, I got my little peace thing I used to wear on a... Like that. Let's see what oh, here's the one. Here's what I'm looking for. Okay. Now, oh, wait a second. Where's my, where's my glasses? Now, uh, it's the. I have a, I actually have a title. I have a long association with w, I have a long association with WBAI uh, Radio New York. It's a Pacific radio station. There's like five in the. Oh, I won't get it. To look it up. Pacific Radio WBAI New York. Long association with them. I used to be. A, it was called the Arts Director. I still have a title. I'm actually Arts Director Emeritus. Doesn't matter. Which made me the music uh, the music director, director of drama literature, and also the, the critique programs. You know, like uh, you know the, the the people that do uh, film reviews. Um, you know, but, you know, ballet, whatever, dance reviews, uh, mu museum, we have all that stuff. I have to go there. Anyway. <sighs> Smoothie. This one has uh, uh, red grapes, uh, mango, uh, pineapple, pineapple yogurt, and then my, I have chia seeds in it, along with uh, bow, bow flush uh, and um, this uh, mocha power, something, something like that, one of those power things. Very good. Healthy. So anyway, because I was BAI and I'm, I'm an engineer, you know, production engineer, like uh, do the news and stuff like that, and also location engineer, I did that too. Anyway, one, one year we were doing uh, the Clearwater Festival, you know, the one that Pete Seeger used to do every year. You know, and in fact, that's the last time I saw um, Richie Havens in concert. Anyway, so, so we did that. Oh, excuse me, if you hear noise and stuff like that, because I'm recording from my little, you know, uh, well, we're, we're in a, what's called the, um, uh, uh, the Lembete se session uh, section of the Salamanti, um, which is here in Alice. Um, well, you know, we don't call these things. People, if you're in, look, little, we don't call the stuff location. These are young people. We don't call them loca um, location. We don't call them townships anymore. We call your location. So, I mean, that's the location, I'm in, which means you're going to hear dogs, chickens, you're going to have people talk. It's a Sunday morning now. There are people yelling back and forth. They, you know, it's, it's a good community. Anyway. So when I was at this Clearwater Festival, and we were sitting up because they had to broadcast live, right across from us were these, uh, you know, American Indians, and they were they, they were doing something, they selling stuff, stuff like that. So we were there for about two, two days, two, three days, whenever it was, just guess two days. And um, so it's weird because they saw us all the time, you know, and say hello, keep on going. But near the, somewhere in there, this guy, he just came up, one of the, one of the guys, one of the Indians, um, he came up, you know, he gave me this button. I don't know if you can see it. He just gave it to me. He said, this is for you. And I said something. He said, no, 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 this is for you. I was going to pay me. He said, no, no, this is for you. Okay. So I just took the button. I didn't pay no attention to it. I just, and then um, sometime, it's, 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 I used to wear it and I didn't pay attention. Then at some particular point, I looked at it and I realized that on the bottom there, i take this glass off. On the bottom there, it said, Red Cloud. I said, okay. So, of course, 
when I realized that, because you can't really see it, but it's like, anyway, I noticed the red cloud. So I looked it up. Red cloud was this Sioux Indian, right? And then Sioux, whatever it was. But this cat, he was the only, it was the only group of people that defeated the United States Army, right? This is back in 18, whatever. Um, but he, so he was, so he was the chief, he was a warrior general, he was, um, and then he went, he became a diplomat in the treaty, so he went to, um, to Washington, D.C. And, uh, you know, he was a diplomat, he was making all kinds of things. Then he came back to them at some particular point, and he told these guys, he said, look, um, we're not going to war anymore because we're not going to beat them. Because he saw all the, was got all the mechanism, all the whatever. So we're not going to beat them. So we're not going to do that. He said, don't worry. Well, um, it will come to pass. In other words, wait generations, it will come to pass. Is what he was basically so Pass my gun. Okay. So I'm like, oh, this is, this is, it's interesting because remember this cat, to me, it was a strategy. The tactics, he did his tactics, his strategy. What we're missing, what, 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 what I need, what I'm always interested in, I think that um, um, uh, black people um, in the United States, so you know, uh, you know, African Americans, well, eight U.S. Um, what we've always been missing is strategy and tactics. Somehow we're just lacking with that. We just willy nilly do anything we want. And so I'm thinking, wow, uh, this is interesting, because now it's sort of weirdly Red Cloud's thing is coming to pass. There's a lot of stuff happening all over the world, um, but. So especially uh, this this movement here. Now I did a I recorded a recorded video yesterday. They're going to put it up probably later on today. This one I'm recording right now. I'm going to put it up tomorrow, I think, because of the timeliness of this thing. So anyway, so I was um, checking out, you know, uh, checking out the um, whatever, and I came across this guy's channel. Uh, it's called uh, the Fura TV, whatever it is. And so I, think, uh, I listened to them, but, but I listened to them. Now I don't know if you can hear this, but Because he's talking like that. But what's nice about what he, with whatever he's saying, but what's really interesting is that here's this music in the background. I'm attracted to music, so that's a strategy too. I'm attracted to music, so I said, hey, let me check it out. So let me stop him from talking. So, uh, you know, so he said something, then I, then I said something like that. And then this cat, I'm not going to mention anybody's name, he wrote uh, the Fury TV. What what game? You're using the DAS flag in your video because you didn't study ADOS, right? You then she, she talks about Yvette Cornell. He says Yvette is a black woman with a female with a white female fiance. And then he went on to say some other stuff. And then, so I answered him. I said, I said my answer, whatever he he said, would you follow somebody like that? And I, I said my answer is yes. I don't care who is boinking who as long as a liberation work is being done. Then of course he wrote back. How is how is liberation work being done by a homosexual who by a homosexual who doesn't want to willfully appropriate uh, the black race and wants to give any reparations back into the hands of a white woman fiance of this woman? Okay, great. I guess this is gonna hit sooner or later. Then I wrote back, uh, I uh, guess you're gonna have. I guess you're gonna have to ask Miss Yvette that uh, that your question. Now, for me, I'm not concerned. If I was, I would hope that her uh, paramour is at least an ally, if not a straight (pun intended) up modern day John um, Brackett's Joanna Brown. Okay, that comes from when, when they asked Malcolm. They said, "Any white person you respect, whatever." He said he thought about it. He was one. Well, then came back. He said, "John Brown." Okay, look up John Brown if you know who he is. Okay, that's the preamble. This is going to be, be pretty pretty long. Okay, here we go. I want to talk about homosexuality. Well, homosexuality. I want to talk about this, this stuff. Um, my first encounter, well, in understanding that, in, in I was doing the Patterson Project. We had, you know, the Patterson Project is in the South Bronx, Mount Haven section of the Bronx, the South Bronx. Um, and... What happens in the Patterson projects? Was, uh, we we have um, we had uh, um, six-story buildings and thirteen-story buildings. We had a, we, were, we were in a six-story building, but each building had their little group crew of, of people, you know. Um, and then then you might hook up with the next building. So you had a whole crew of people. So if you want to say play a game, you know, I mean, you might have competition against another building, another um, um, a building. And so you know, for instance, one of the popular games was a Johnny on the Pony. I love Johnny on the Pony. 
where you it's like uh, you have maybe six people, five people, maybe about five people and one whatever, and you would sort of link, holding each other like like you know you hold you hold around the waist, but you know you tuck your head so it won't hurt. And then the other the other building they would come and jump on your back because you're trying to break this chain. Okay, you're trying to break this chain. Okay, um, so it's, it's, a, it's a brutal game because you know you know. You know, uh, Henry Dumas has this thing uh, when he did, uh, do you know when the Green Stone, his, his, his novel, unfinished novel, well, um, Eugene B. Redman uh, finished it up or whatever he did. Uh, but he says, uh, children, when children, the games we play prepare us for, you know, life, basically. That's, that's what it, Henry was saying in the, in the thing. Okay. In our group, in every group, we have, there's all kinds of people, crazy people, crippled people, whatever. And we had one guy, homosexual. I mean, you knew at nine years old <laughs> that he was Eugene, who became Eugenia. You just knew. He, he was, um, in fact, I don't know what, but he was raised by his mother, his blind mother. So it was just him and his blind mother in, the, in, the, in their apartment. And so he's just part of the group. And in fact, Eugene, um, I smoked cigarettes from the time I was nine years old to 22. I gave it for my 22nd birthday. Great thing. I won't get into all that right now. But the, my first cigarette, we were, uh, me and Eugene were up in, uh, in uh, France Eagle Park uh, up on the Unconquerors. And we smoking the cigarettes, we just started smoking cigarettes, right? Um, and uh, I fell out the tree. <laughs> so, no, anyway, dizzy, fell out the tree. Anyway, so, this, so, so anyway, this, Eugene was also in my, my class. We went to the uh, um, uh, PS31, um, William Lord Garrison School, which no longer exists. Anyway, it was like a castle. You know? And um, and so at some particular point, around that time, I was at Eugene's uh, uh, up his, his apartment with his blind mama. We were in the room on what we were doing. But anyway, he pinned me down and he, 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 he stuck his penis in my mouth. I'm like, I'm going. You know, Eugene was strong, big. I'm, I'm a slight little kid, you know. But, um, you know what I'm saying? We fought him off, whatever it is. And uh, just read this, say, you know, not into that, not into that, just with kids, you know what I mean? So I'm going like, nah, 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 whatever. So Eugene, so I never had any problems with Eugene after that, okay? Okay, so basically I'm saying, well, so that's what happened. My, uh, they'll keep on going. So this is like in the um, late 50s. Um, so then the next thing that I realized, say, um, oh, next conscious thing about uh, homosexuality, if you will, in, uh, as part of the New York City Mission Society Cadet Corps, Right, and our unit, um, Mount Haven section, was uh, well, it was a uh, um, uh, Saint Anne's, Saint Anne's, what's that? Saint, whatever it was. Anyway, um, so that's where our, kid, our unit was, because the Kidako had unit, units all over the city, you know, Lower East Side, all the the rough areas, it was Harlem, then and then. You know, even when we had a, a, a um, you know, where the the five percenters uh, created down in Manhattan, well, we were in that, that kind of area. Anyway. I'll never forget, this is my first thing. There's this guy, I'm not going to name his name, but our unit, our commander, you know, you had these companies, company A, B, C, you know, where the young, I was the, the younger, maybe it's about 10. So anyway, I was in one of the units and something happened, you know, because you have, you come in, you have a formation, da -da, you have these workshops like you might do, um, um, like Boy Scouts, you know, you do night making, you, and, then, and then you come back for formation again. And when we came back for formation at the end, he said, I want to tell you something. Because it was some, somebody called somebody a faggot or something like that. And back then, it doesn't matter. And he says, you cannot call anybody a faggot unless you're doing it to him, which makes you a faggot. Hey, that makes sense. Okay, that's the next thing. Now, I won't say anything. No, I have to say this. Um, Later on, with another particular point, we had a, a Mr. Dixon was in charge of the drum, Warriors Drum and Bugle Corps. One of the Warriors you ever see the Bruce's Millions, you know, the, the Richard Pryor film. Well, they're the ones that they're they're, they're the there's the, the the marching band on a on a baseball field before it starts. It's the Warriors. Great, great. anyway. Um, uh, so he was the quartermaster, and you know he was down in quartermaster, and, and he heard some noise, whatever have you, and it ends up that guy that was saying da da da. He was boinking the the guy that said, "Well, I'll name Burgess name." He was Boinkin Burgi, or Wilbur Burgi. Wilbur Burgi is the brother of Irving Burgi, who was a very famous Calypso singer from the island. Anyway, so so what happened is uh, uh, Burgi fired, you know, Mr. Dixon. That's going to come into play later. Okay, so that's, that's, that's my next 
understanding. I say understanding. I didn't, I didn't witness that, but we knew something was going on. Okay, because you knew that Bergie was, but it didn't affect you know the, the thing. Okay, the next thing, um, and then you know, and you know, then you st oh yeah. Uh, then I went into theater, and then I was 17, you know, you ever see the movie Fame? You know, Leroy, the guy who comes from the ghetto, you know, he's wearing sweatpants, whatever, he wouldn't cooperate. Well, like, that was me. You know, I'm, I'm, I was the only one in Negro Sample Company, the intermediate class, that actually came from the, you know, the ghetto. You know, uh, past the project. And so, all the stuff like, you know, you gotta wear tights? I wouldn't wear tights, I wear sweatpants, you know? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a dude, you know? We well, even when we had the karate, anyway, we had all kinds of class, karate class, did all kinds of things. Uh, so, uh, so I'm not into that. So, uh, and I think what happens, with, especially with dancers, because you're using certain muscles, and, and it's also an expression. You know, when, when you do theater, you open up to whatever have you. So it's interesting because of the way they walk and whatever have you. you sort of, you, you know, it's like if you're a bodybuilder, you have a certain physique. If you're a runner, da da da. If you have a rower, ba ba. If you have a swimmer, you have all kinds of things. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll get to my point. Okay. Then um, I went into the Air Force and had problems with them. And then the next time, oh, when I was in the Air Force, that's when stuff really started happening in the so-called gay community. Now, the, one of the things that happened, we had the Stonewall, the Stonewall thing, that's where the transvestites, you know, everybody says there were gay men. No, it's transvestites, black and Puerto, black and Latino transvestites. That's where the, the cops used to beat on them. And so they wasn't, they wouldn't take it anymore and they started fighting back. And that's when they had the whole Stonewall rise down in the village. Okay, uh, so then this, so, so uh, the next thing, let me keep on trying to go in chronological order. The cadet corps, when I left in 1970, uh, the cadet, when I came back finally, so what the cadet corps was sort of, uh, now fraternity, uh, as, what I mean, here's the story the FBI, because we were such a, um, because we basically had this paramilitary training and we were disciplined, you know what I mean? And we was like built in a military way. So when I came to the Air Force, it was like, Child's play to me. I was like, this is nothing, you know. So the FBI came to Will, and basically they said, you gotta, you gotta stop this program, because, and then I guess they used all this other stuff, you know, they, 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 whatever proclivities are and stuff like that. And he just capitulated, you know. So the cadet corps, basically, for all practical purpose, wasn't the same cadet corps that I that I was raised in, that formed me from the time I was nine years old to basically nineteen. Okay, Whew. I'm gonna get to it. So, um, so then when I when I, uh, I went into the Air Force, became lab technician, you know, um, and when I got out, when I came back to New York in the, in 1980, 1981, in the early 80s, that's when the AIDS was starting to hit, I mean, big time, and people were trying to figure out what it was. But because I was a lab technician, I was, you know, which means I was, I did chemistry, serology, and, you know, um, um, all blood blood banking, all this just stuff. But I was all um, in, in, in in hematology, you know, blood banking, whatever have you. But when they started talking about that the hemophiliacs were getting AIDS and a disproportionate thing, I said, well, because they named, named it the gay disease. I was going to myself, wait a second, blood, it's got to be the blood, because I'm lactose, I feel, blood is the vector. Nobody understood how AIDS was being spread. Blood is the vector. So if you, if you are, in other words, if, if, you're, if, you, if you're boinking somebody in the anus, remember the capillaries around the anus are very delicate. So you're busting that stuff, with, and, and then you're, whatever, so your, your semen, whatever have you, is getting into the body that way. That's one way. That's, a homo, that's homosexual. But what's also happening in the early AIDS, people understand, is that the... Um, the crack had hit, right? So you had a lot of dr drug people, you know, black, Puerto, whatever, a lot of drug people, you know, that were into, and they needed money. So the homosexual community, which had money because they didn't have any responsibilities, they, and, uh, they, you know, they were boinking in the bathhouses, whatever it is, but now if they wanted, you know, they see some, 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 some drug addict and they would boink them. The AIDS would go to the drug addict, the drug addict then would take, would, would, um, uh, with, with, you know, because of the needles or whatever have you. So that, that's how it spread between the, the, uh, the gay community, if you would, um, and the, the drug community, and it kept on going back and forth. Remember that also the gay, the gay community was, uh, you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so that's how it was spreading. Now, the, but what happened the time, time I left it, basically gay people like Eugene, they, went, they, they, they ventured out of our neighborhood, and they sort of conglomerate together, become a, a group unto themselves. Whereas before, when we grew up, you know what I mean, they were part of the whole community. 
I mean, there's a story that um, that Yoruba, uh, uh, Pablo Yoruba Guzman, who's, who's one of the people who founded the Young Lords Party, which is the, the party based on the Black Panthers, which uh, which they they anyway. Uh, another person, if you, if you ever watch Democracy Now, uh, um, um, Juan, who's was who's the co-host there, he's uh, he was he was one of the uh, people of the Young Lords Party. Also, um, Felipe Luciano, and uh, that's it. Oh, pff, stupid. Um, the guy on Fox, you know, whatever the you know the the, the uh, you know the, the you know um, the guy on Fox, right? Uh, um, what's he calling himself these days? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but you know the the, the the Latino guy on Fox for a long time, the one with the opening. Um, what do you call that? Uh, who's that guy? The gangsters. Uh, what do you call that? The, the what's this? Damn, I'm losing everything now. The um, Al Capone, the chestnut, nothing in it. Like that. He was he became he was the lawyer at the very end for the Young Lords Party. Okay. How people change. So people change all the time. It is that fly. Watch me get up. Anyway, so Pablo, who was in the Murals Project, which is like uh, the next project up from the Patterson Project, they had the same situation. He tells the story one time because the same thing happened to us. Tell him I called this guy a faggot, and in fact, the, the, the guy, the faggot, said, uh, "I might be a faggot, but I can kick your ass." And that's the, the same thing happened with Eugene. Somebody was messing with Eugene. He said, the same. I call him a fact. I'll kick your ass. So you, you, you see, so this is like a weird, not weird, but this is, but they were part of our group. So I think when people in the, in the 80s, um, when they got their, you know, uh, they were celebrating that they were there and they went hog wild or whatever have you, that's how the gay community came together like that. Okay. Now. The reason you have this situation in Hollywood and a bunch of other places, because then gay, because when I came back to New York, it became like this theater was like a lot of gay folks, and they were hiring themselves or whatever have you. They were just, it was the cronyism, you know, and so I just left that scene. I went to radio, you know, because I learned radio, whatever. I didn't went to radio. Mm. Love that smoothie. Okay, it's gonna be a long one. Sorry. Now, this, so when you have this, this, what's happening in Hollywood, a lot of other places, like Atlanta, whatever have you, they hide, they, 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 they you know, it becomes a situation where they for the, I don't want to say the racist white supremacist, but the people in charge, right, they, they see they can take advantage of these folks. And, you know, if you do for me, whatever have you, say hiring each other, da 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 you know. And so that's how you just networks, and they become more powerful, more powerful. Same thing with you. Yep, I won't say, let me leave the church out of it. But the same thing happened in the theater, and then went to the theater, to, to Hollywood. Uh, Atlanta right now, it's like, pff, my, and did they tell me? I don't know, you know. Um, Anyway, so so you have this. You know, I think that the, the women in Atlanta, they're they're like freaking out because there's real no men, and the men are doing what they do. That 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 is like a mess, you know. So the whole fabric of of, of, of black and the, the men are in jail. So the so-called real men or men men, um, you know, they're taken out of the community, and this whole thing started. The whole breaking up the family actually started with um, that idiot um, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, right? He's a, he's an immigrant, but when he came to do his dis when he whatever da, 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 when he did his dissertation he did his dis examining the black family and his and when he came to the the Kennedy administration whatever administration he was in he basically put forth this paper and that's when they started to say oh the welfare program the men have can't be around da 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 that's what started to break up the family you know let me show you something I okay I just like Daniel Patrick Moynihan. Mm. Another a video, I'll tell you something about that. Okay, boom. So, now we come to ADOS movement. Uh, and if somebody's accusing um, uh, uh, Yvette of whatever, and that she can't, because she, her bona fides is, being cha is going to be challenged, if this is true, I don't know. He could just be bummed. But if it's true, it'll come out sooner or later, you know? But here's the thing, like I said, well, here's the thing. Because of my orientation, my view of, 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 of remember, I'm in theater. So, I mean, I used to, a Negro Ensemble company, I used to sit over the top of them and watch these, these like, you know, these dancers or whatever running around like, dee, 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 dee. I was fascinated. You know, I'm 17 years old, you know, 18 years old. I'm fascinated. This is fascinating because I had never seen a whole group of people acting like Eugene. You know what I mean? Because we had wooded out group like that. And so, so, anyway, so my orientation, I'm cool. I'm, I'm cool with that. In fact, my favorite, my, my dance club, my church, was uh, was a shelter. Shelter, 
I was just, um, I came from, you know, Larry Levan and, and the garage kind of thing. Timmy Redford uh, studied under Larry Levan. So the shelter opened up, and this was like a club. It was basically is black gay men, right? But they had a membership. But you, anybody could come in. But it's basically the, uh, their haven. You know what I mean? And it was an incredible club. Unbelievable. Still goes to these shelters, exist today. Um, but it was amazing because, you know, you could you can come in all kinds of dress and undress, um, but it's all total respect if they had good bounces. Anything happened, even on the floor. Like, say, for instance, I have several, I have like six different uh, dance partners. One of my, my main dance partners was Darcy. So, so Darcy always had the same top, which was like a black thing like a, a bikini top not bikini top but a bra top right she always wear a bra top like this, so midriff was out like that and, and Darcy is quite good looking right she's from Chicago we used to have this fight she said oh house was born in Chicago oh yeah sure 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 I'm gonna say yeah but uh, you know let's not forget and then we go back and forth whether Chicago was house or New York was house you know I always gave it up to her because you know I had to you know the warehouse blah 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 so if, if somebody's dance when they come up on her and she doesn't want to deal with them she would just look at them and they'd have to back off. That's the rules of the club. Uh, but anybody can come in as long as you respected the space and you respected it. It wasn't a, like a club where you come to rap and you're looking for people. In fact, there was no alcohol. This we this was dancers. These were professional like Broadway dancers and stuff like that. This is where they come. I think it went between people like say Madonna's bodyguards at the time. They after they drop off at five o'clock or whatever it is, they would all come <laughs> to the club. Um, and, you know, this is it was an amazing time. People who know the shelter, you understand what I'm saying. It's like I did a radio thing on the shelter, it was an amazing thing. I guess it exists someplace else, not now. Gotta find it. Me and Darcy did it. Okay. <laughs> Strategy and tactics. Here's the way I look at this. Remember I said Sloan Chef. Sloan, we're in Africa. Let me say something to you right now. Um, when you come to Africa, they first say, oh, welcome home, blah, blah, blah. If you just being a tour, welcome home, everybody's brand new. And then they say, well, let me give you an African name. And I always was fascinated by that. So African name, well, I'm just starting with this. My last name is Sloan. Sloan, the Anglo root meaning of Sloan is warrior. Okay, so I'm a warrior chef. So I said, well, if you're going to rename me, you don't have to rename me. Whatever in your language be, uh, w means warrior, that's my name. You don't give me a, like a name like Tulani or you know da 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 or Buta whatever they're gonna really give you, you know, like that. And but my actually the translation of the the, the in, in in like uh, the language is sort of mangled here. So like some words like with um, you know, like Bosa and Venda, you know, or Sutu, you know, from Sutu people. I think this is more like a Sutu you know, Bosa thing. But my actual uh, name down here would be Lechote. Lechote. L I K R O T I. That's what that is right there. See, they're learning about the set. So my mentality, if, if, even from a young person, was um, uh, uh, was of a I'm gonna say warrior, but like I, I think in terms of I mean, like I'm a child of a goon. You know, we're a warrior. You know, it's, that's what it is. Um, um, and plus, I'm like a metal tiger in the in the in the, um, in the Chinese system, lone loner animal. You know, but you know, whatever it is. So I, I sometimes I think in terms of those kind of strategy and tactics. So for me, especially in a movement like in war, everybody takes fight. But it's just that, you know, what I was explaining this is, trying to explain people to understand, is that, so for me, I might be in a unit, say, with men, uh, well, I'm a medic, so I would be a medic, but I mean, I'm, uh, I might be in a unit, say I was just a regular warrior, warrior. I would be in one unit. So if you, instead of shunning, say, the gay community, you say, you have your you have your place in our movement. We need you to do this, this, and this. You know what I mean? You go in and give us information on that, or you, or you know, y'all can be together as long as you're fighting this system. You know, you can join the same thing. Women, whatever it is. Some some people will be together, men and women. Some women will just be with women. Some will be just men. But you 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 don't have to. Like I said, let me go back. Like with the Pan Africanists, I don't know what their problem. You have a, a thing to fight. We're all fighting this, this, this system. We're not fighting each other. We're all fighting the system at the same time. And so that is, I think, what the, what the situation is. We, we need our strategy and tactics. We need everybody on board, right? When I say everybody, I'm not talking about our allies. They, they cannot be in front of us. Our allies got to follow our orders. Or do things in their in their way that won't that, that, that won't I say orders but that won't 
detract from the main force, the tip of the sphere, if you will. You know, let me show you. Let me just give you one thing. When, if you if you if you're traveling around, you do certain things. You think of certain things. Like for instance, when Beyonce did that uh, Michael number at the Super Bowl with that formation thing, what I saw. I don't know, everybody saw the Panthers and Michael Jackson, whatever, but what I saw because of her blonde hair and the way it was, to me, it was like, oh, tip of the spear. This is a, these are warrior women, tip of the spear. But that's the that's you can do that. The men, you know, and what's interesting because when Bruno Mars and his crew, you know, to me they were better dancers, they were they were better performers. But get it. They all came together. Bruno Mars was coming this way, she was coming that, and they came together. Then then the ally white boy, you know, he joined. You, you understand what I'm getting? It's, 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 it's amazing to me. It's, it's, everything that's happening is amazing to me. If we just stop, breathe, and think for a second, we don't want to fight each other. And don't worry about those, those, those naysayers, those, you know, the people that they put up in the TVs or whatever have you. There's enough people, there's enough channels. There's enough, you know, all kinds of people. Uh, you just have to pick the ones that make sense of it. Now, what I actually do when I'm answering that guy, Anybody on, on when I'm doing a comment section, I always try to bring it around to oh, you need to know more. Then go to www.ados101.com. Every posting that's that's a strategy. So even if you don't want to be, that's what you can do. And then I tell you, hey, you can listen to a vet twice a week and Antonio um, um, uh, once a week. Get the real information, get informed from there. But what we need, we have to trust. I trust Yvette and Antonio. Okay, I trust Miss Event and 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 turn and, and attorney more. Those I don't want to say they're my leaders, but I trust them so I can analyze everything and what they say because they deal with data. I don't have to deal with personalities. I don't care what their what their background. They could hey, if somebody is a murderer, so called murderer, they go to jail and they come out, you're gonna say, Oh, I can't follow McQueen's as a murderer? Huh? You'd rather follow somebody like I don't know, well, Jesse's, since Jesse's passed, let me pick on Jesse. Jesse Jackson, you know, Boulay, you know, who, uh, huh? This is why people like, um, who's the other guy that, you know, oh man, Al Sharpton, no longer gay people, step aside, and they know they can't jump up, because this movement is so powerful, anybody that has been doing that, that silver silver rights movement anybody that was part of the silver rights movement i got that from um i think alton maddox put that up somebody put that up uh, recently about a year ago silver rights movement those are people who sold us out for pieces of silver so i don't again i don't want to call names i'm just saying we don't even have to call people names anymore well people you can call people because you want to be entertained what you do, but are real serious people, you let other people, if somebody's calling in there, let's say for instance, if you're going to do the whole, if Tariq Nasheed does the coon train, whatever have you, let, that's his thing, and maybe a couple other people, fine, but everybody doesn't have to jump and call people names, it doesn't, because somebody might be a coon one day, and then all of a sudden, see the light, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, or as, uh, as in the wire, when, they, when uh, oh, he recently died too, she's a on so when the guy says, um, uh, when they said this, the, the Somebody was going to have a conversion. He said he's on the road to Damascus, you know, and that's how the political thing got to change this thing. I know I'm mumbling, but you can understand what I'm saying. Some people, I'm actually told uh, ADOS because you understand what I'm saying. So anyway, so that's my stand on this, um, and um, I'm I'm doing some other kind kinds of things because I'm I'm here on on a motherland, mother content, whatever you want to say, uh, but I'm firmly with ADOS going to the conference. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what it is. And I have ideas about what we should be doing in terms of the, the diaspora or with, with Africa. So that's it. Sorry, I really apologize it took so long. But I sort of had to get this out because people, when the, the gay thing, my, my point really is what, what, what that commander said, said, hey look, if you ain't born, can I understand you have images. Like I, I had seared in my head. There's two images I, had, I have in my head. As far as no, let me give you three images. Um, like I said, no, I didn't say, but, but um, when I was like seven, eight years old, whatever have you, I saw these like somewhere around. And, you know, you see the pornographic cards, you know, the women and the men, and da da da. da. And so these, these little girls came up one time, and they said, "Oh, you don't know how to do it." I'm going, "I don't know. I really don't know how to do it, but I'm perpetrating a fraud, you know." Gotta be. I said, yes, I know how to do it. So, so well, show me. Come, let's go up here. So went to the 13-story building up to the top, and a point. Hey. So I've been born since I was like eight years old, right? Be pre-dog water. I'm, I'm like a 
and so I used to do that. So that's one that's one image from from the thing. But there was when I was traveling through Italy, I, it was really interesting because they they had the pornographic magazines right out in the without at least when I went was that in the whenever it was in the nineties. They have these, they, they had the magazines right on the thing, and one of the shimmering images, we had the young girls on the cover, and one girl was fist, you know, fist boinking the other girl on the cover. And the look on their faces was interesting, and it seared in my head, right? The other image I have is um, I, uh, I did engineering work for the Winter Music Conference. This is back um, in the early, the late 90s. Uh, yeah, late 90s. I did um, when there, maybe the, Fourth or fifth one, right? I was, um, I was, I did it for two years, I think. Yeah, I did it for two years. I was the, um, I was one of the people on the crew that you know we go and record the different panels and stuff like that. Well, in that thing, remember this is when the, the Haitians were coming over here. I would do, I, it's like it's a dance, dance music thing. We, we, the bathrooms, let's say, weirdly open, and there was this white guy, boinking this Haitian guy, and they both looked at me and the look on their faces, like the thing. I was, I, it was like weird to me, you know? So that sort of sears in my head. So, you know, I can't stop them when this is the atmosphere, but it doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect my warrior thing. I don't have to attack them or tell them, you don't do that. Don't get me wrong. People who, people who do that, you go and do that. But I got another mission here. You know, I, got, I can't be wasting my time, you know, cr cr criticizing other people, calling other people names. You know, we got so much work to do, right? So that's my last message. Message from me, T from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet, speaking from a desk of the ADOS, letting you know what I only suspect.